everyone, this is Yoda from Team Loaded, bringing you another video for NerdStomper.com. This video is going to be the second in a three-part series on Wretched Hag. The first video covered uh, general skill build and strategy for playing Wretched Hag, and this video is going to cover the early game portion, and the third video is going to cover the mid to late game portion of playing Wretched Hag. This replay is from a recent matchmaking game that I played. Uh, so one thing you get to notice is that uh, my item build, which is mentioned in the first video, I got plus eight intelligence and some regeneration, which, uh, as I mentioned in that video, is for uh, most most effective last hitting and also just generally making your hero as strong as possible while spending all of your early gold. I also got flash as my first skill, and I'm standing on top of this cliff, waiting for the rune to spawn. I find that cliff to be the best place to stand because it's really hard to sneak up on you since you have such a high elevation and you also have vision of the rune so uh, you'll be able to, it's also close enough to the rune that you'll be able to get to it in time so you'll, be, you'll probably be able to pick it up in case, in case it spawns where you're checking. No enemy heroes should be able to compete with you for it since you have flash which will allow you to just escape, just grab the rune and escape in the worst case scenario. As it turned out, a haste spawned. Uh, the top lane was actually Devourer and Pyromancer so I left the haste for them to take uh, they didn't actually take it though, which is a little bit surprising. Uh, they really should have taken it since Haste with Devourer uh, and his second skill is has a lot of potential to get an early Bloodlust, while uh, Solomon Hag with Haste just really has no potential at all. In general, when you're solo mid, you're going to want to take Illusion and Double Damage runes and leave Haste and Invisible runes to your, to your allies. Regeneration runes obviously don't really do anything at level 1, so it's your choice whether to burn them or not. I think I mentioned in an earlier video that I would rather leave them there since you know they're there and your opponent may or may not know they're there. So there's a chance that you'll have a chance at an uncontested regeneration later in the game. So if you notice the matchup I have right now middle is a, an Arachna. So Hag against Arachna, generally uh, Arachna is going to be able to outlast hit Hag and do more damage with attacks but Hag is like, ba you're basically free rolling because he can't kill you, but you can kill him. A technique I just res I just took advantage right there is uh, so I wanted to get him low enough so that I could kill him with uh, one nuke and with two nukes and a blink, but not low enough that he'd want to pop his flask. So obviously this is not a good strategy against anyone who realizes that you're doing it because they'll just use their flask even though it's not fully efficient. But in general, Han players like to hold their flask for when it's going to be getting full value. So if you can harass them to just the right amount of HP, which is pretty much what this Arachna is at, then you'll basically have a really good chance at killing them. Here I made kind of a blunder since I used Flash to get in close, which means that I can't use Flash to hit my second nuke. And as a result, he was able to escape with red HP and then basically just get full value out of his flask, even though that's what I worked so hard to stop him from doing. So. When you're going for the kill, make sure you don't flash in unless they're going to die like from like three attacks on a nuke. What you want to do is you want to nuke first and then start attacking them so you can use flash to hit your second nuke, even though they'll be further away. Here that mistake actually cost me quite a bit since having a full HP Arachna on me when I have almost out of regen and I only have like 400 gold, so I might not even be able to finish my bottle in time. Here. Uh, basically just trading away the last of my HP for some of his HP and a last hit. Uh, looks like I could have grabbed the haste, which I wasn't really paying attention to. I kind of forgot that it was there, which is not obviously not something you want to do. You always want to be remembering where, where runes are, especially if you leave them at level 1. I think in this game I kind of assumed my eyes would take it. Even though we have vision, like, I didn't think it would be necessary for me to check since I thought my eyes were going to take it at level 1 for an early bloodlust. Anyway, after all those encounters, I find myself in a situation you don't want to find yourself in. Basically, you have just over 500 gold, you're at really low HP, and you don't, ha and you're out of regen. So, basically, you can't touch creeps, but you only need one creep for your bottle. So, what's there? What are you to do? Basically, you should. Uh, the answer is just sell one of your stat items to get your bottle. Like you really, you really don't want to be selling them, but it's much selling them. Like the cost you get, you incur for selling a. Mark the novice is much better than like having to just sit in lane, not touching creeps, until it gets all the way to your tower, which could be any number of waves since the other hero could be pulling the wave back as well. So 
so in this game I was able to employ that tactic to basically just save myself from completely getting dominated in the lane. Uh, now it's about the 4 minute mark, which is why he checked, which is why he started walking bottom. What I should have done is uh, been a lot more attentive to the time and just made it so that wherever the rune spawned I was going to get it. As it turns out, I got pretty lucky and the rune just spawned top anyway. But what I could have done is just like, as soon as he started walking bottom, just follow him bottom, and if the rune spawn bo spawns bottom, use my flash to get to the rune before he does. Uh, here, one thing that you're going to be able to take advantage of with Hag is that it's pretty hard to kill you when you have like a haste and flash. So if an enemy uses, so enemy heroes might use like their potions or just play it a little more aggressive than they should be, since usually you won't be able to just walk up and kill them, or walk up and or like. Usually, normally, like where the rock needs to flask there, normally a hero wouldn't be able to walk up and interrupt his flask without taking significant damage. But uh, since I was going to refill my HP anyway with bottle, and I had a haste, and I had flash, I was able to just attack him ba basically for like 200 HP, which is really what you want to do with Hag. Another tactic I mentioned in the first video was that uh, once you get your bottle and you're getting every rune, you should be training HP actively with enemy heroes. So what I did there was basically I just walked up to him and then used my nuke and just started attacking him. Like if he attacks me back that's okay because since I'm probably gonna fill my bottle up with the next rune. So basically you're just trading HP because you have access to infinite HP. As a result uh, I got him low enough that I was just able to flash in and kill him. Obviously he probably should have just gone to the fountain there instead of just dying. But uh, it's a mistake most people are gonna make. Like he was only in the lane like he just used the health pot and he didn't really want to go heal so uh, I was able to use my... I was basically just able to kill him because he didn't want to go heal I think uh, based on what happened like after after I used my nuke he was, might have been baiting from, uh, baiting my nuke for and then he was gonna like use his second skill so it wouldn't do enough damage and then like maybe attack me to death but like that I'm not even sure who would win that conflict since I still had quite a bit of HP at the end of the fight so Maybe that wasn't the best idea for him, for him to try to pull off. Since it took significant damage to, and used like all my mana to kill him last time, this bottle is probably not gonna fill up, like fill up my HP and mana enough to, like trade HP with him and just continue sitting in the lane. Since so I can like walk up and use one nuke and then I'm out of mana, right? So basically, once you, if there's not gonna be a rune spawning soon and you're out of mana and HP. Uh, it's not that bad to go to go back to the fountain, since going back to the fountain also enables you to buy a teleport scroll and start TP ganking, which is really what something that you want to be doing with Wretched Hag, since uh, her her flash has just huge synergy with the teleport scroll. Like if I t if I teleport anywhere on the map, then by the time the other heroes react, they might they're probably already in range of flash and then slow from hot. So basically. TB yanking with Hag, especially if you get a kill early mid, is really, really strong. Most enemy heroes probably also won't be expecting the burst that comes from like your nuke, your third skill, and your ultimate. So if, you're, if your lanes are like good at all at killing them, which my lanes were this game, we had to slither and a swift blade bottom, and we had devourer and pyromancer top, so just two dynamic lanes that could definitely contribute to gank. Didn't look like there were any opportunities as I left the base though, so I just walked back to my lane. Remember, it's important that you notice that I walked there instead of teleporting there, since walking there keeps my teleport scroll open to set up counter ganks if they should happen. So essentially, basically you just worked another aspect into your hag gameplay. So aside from just trading HP with the guy in mid and like maybe killing him if he stays too long, you also now have another <coughs> another trick like up your sleeve, which is using your TP scroll to gank when when the time is appropriate. So in order to effectively counter you, the enemy team is going to have to watch out for, like, basically just counter all these aspects of your game. Like, they're going to have to be careful in every single lane and also be beating you mid. Right, in this game it looks like uh, I saw it, an opportunity top, but it wasn't really an opportunity since they just got a double kill before I even got there. Uh, when you're playing Richard Hag, it's very important to, like, be able to analyze situations in side lanes very, very quickly. Because, like, there, I probably shouldn't have teleported since... Me TPing there really just didn't do anything since they got it. We're gonna get a double kill anyway, so it's important to know. It's important for you to be able to evaluate how like these situations are gonna end up before you waste a teleport scroll like that. Uh, so I checked top rune when I teleported there, and 
since it wasn't top, it's probably bottom since they they haven't left their lands yet. Uh, here I kind of made a little bit of a loose play. Like I really wanted to get the ring, but I got spidered, so I basically lost like more HP than a full bottle, which is really not what you wanted. Like, which is really not what you want to do when all you're doing is getting a rune. But anyway, uh, so when I just picked up that invis at like red HP, most Richard Hags would probably go heal, so it's very likely that the other team expects me to go heal. So one way I could take advantage of that is since I have an invisible rune, it's very likely that I'm gonna be like I'm gonna die since I have invisible rune and I have flash. So invisible. So normally I'd have to use flash to position myself to land my area effect nukes properly, but since I have flash, I can just use flash. Since I have invis invisible rune, I can just walk there while invisible, and then use flash to escape after I land my nukes. So having red HP really isn't that big of a deal, especially since uh, as soon as I pop out of the invisible, I'll be able to use more bottle charges, and then when I use more bottle charges, I'll be able to heal myself myself up for the end of the fight. So here I went, went in a little bit early, but it looks like they didn't focus me, and I was able to land both of my AoE nukes on... T L like. My wave hit all three, and my third skill hit two heroes, which is pretty devastating in any early fight. So what I should have done after getting that double kill is, instead of like walking through the river to get back, I should have just like walked through the forest, since walking through the river just like makes me kind of vulnerable. Like I wasn't that scared since we just killed three heroes, but you don't really want to set yourself up for situations like this. Uh, like here, I was obviously fine since it was only a rock and I could just flash, so it wasn't that bad of an error, but. You don't want to run into, you don't want to risk yourself to situations that, like, that could have been a lot worse. Like, what if it was a rock and one other hero? Like, it could have easily just died there. So, I should have just run the safe way since I'm definitely, I'm not going to be killing anything. And I want, just don't want to have any chance of my hero dying. Especially, like, when I'm 4 0, have a streak. And dying just increases my dead time, which means that I'm not killing anything. So, here uh, I bought Steam Boots, which. It's definitely the right item choice since uh, it's very it's the, basically just the most efficient way to increase like the power of your hero for the amount of gold you have early. Like a thousand a, th a thousand gold could not be better spent than upgrading your marchers to steam boots in terms of making your hero more powerful in, like in early fights. There, obviously, I just utilized the fact that uh, Hag is really good with teleport scrolls since even though their fight was happening like in the middle of the lane. I was still able to teleport there and almost instantly I contribute to the fight because of Flash. One thing in this game, uh, I don't know why my allies engage bottom, but since they engage bottom and I just recently used my teleport, used my teleport scroll, I'm not going to be able to help them. But uh, what I am going to be able to do is play really aggressively at this tower since uh, my allies are getting to fight bottom. All the enemy heroes are probably going to be bottom, which means that I'll be able to play aggressively at this tower. And if my timing was a little better, and if I was like actually looking at it, I probably wouldn't be able to take it. Like, get the last hit for it. Uh, usually, like, generally, getting the last hit for a tower results in less total gold for your team. But with Hag, before you have Puzzle Box, gold on your hero is much more important than gold on other heroes. Since, like, having... Since Puzzle Box... The power jump you get from getting a Puzzle Box 3 on Hag is much bigger than the power jump you get from getting other items on other heroes. Except maybe, like, Blink on... Or Portal Key on Earthshaker or Magmus. And by Earthshaker, I mean Behemoth. These Dota and Haunt terms, they really should just name the heroes the same thing. It'd be a lot less confusing. So since the fight bottom is over and I already took a tower top, uh, it's a good time to go back to the, go back towards the middle of the, of the, like, the map and start getting rune. So I got Illusion Rune. Uh, the best way to use Illusion Rune here is to use it and then use the images to stack multiple neutral camps while your hero is doing something else. So basically you're getting like farm for three things. Since your since your images are pulling a camp and your hero's like doing something else, you get experience you get like three times the experience, but uh, this game I think I was just way too lazy to do that, so I just used neutral use my images to last hit with my hero. Obviously that's not a habit that you want to get too fond of, but uh yeah just uh yeah don't use this game as an example for what to do with illusion rune since the illusions are currently being pretty poorly used and usually you want to pull neutral camps with them because pulling neutral camps basically just means more farm for free. One advantage of using illusions like this though is that you don't have to keep your attention on multiple areas in the map. Since uh, it looks like we have so many allies bottom it looks like we're probably going to push 
and I don't really want to be microing like my illusions to pull an extra creep camp in the middle of like a team fight, since the team fight's a lot more important than getting one extra neutral camp. Like even though that getting that extra neutral camp is good, it's not it's not as important as getting all your spells properly in a team fight. <sighs> Looks like there's an another illusion rune, and we're about to fight bottom, so I'm gonna be able to make use of one of the other uses of illusion rune. So illusion rune's really good for tanking towers, since if you just let your illusion walk in front of you and you auto attack heroes with them. The tower is going to aggro to them, and obviously you don't care about the HP of your illusion room. It looks like Devourer landed a sick hook though, so I will not be will not have to use them to tank the tower that much, even though they are tanking a little bit. Uh, here, what I should have done is helped my allies fight the tower, since chasing this Arachna is just completely pointless, since he can just teleport uh, at the tower, and I can't do anything. To, I mean, at the shop, and I can't do anything about that. So uh, he was actually made a really good decision in there and teleported like to the to closer tower so he'd be close to his team uh... so if i was like with the team during that fight i would would have been able to basically just do cast all the spells i just did with the support of my team instead of doing the like after they're all dead so i would have gotten a double kill and then my allies would be alive and there'd just be an iraq there so we would have finished there fi so we would have also finished the iraq another small mistake i made there was that I didn't have enough mana to use Flash and Sonar Scream, only one of the above. And basically Sonar Scream would have killed the Gauntlet, and Flash would have let me escape from the Arachna, and I should have used Flash, since escaping from the Arachna is much important, much more important than killing the Gauntlet, since, as I mentioned, I don't have Puzzle Box yet, and getting gold is super important. But anyway, that fight has given me enough gold to get Puzzle Box 1, so I will declare that the early game is over. And please stay tuned for video 3, which is going to cover the mid to late game, probably the same game. Once again, this is Yoda from Team Loaded, and this video is for nerdstopper.com. Thanks for watching.